The dictionary definition of a forest is a limited one. A dense growth of trees and underbrush covering a large tract. Descriptive, but incomplete. Forests are so much more than just a collection of trees. It's where people play. It's one of the most important and reliable sources of fresh, clean water. It's where people work. It's where a wide variety of forest products come from. Animals of all sizes, shapes, and lifestyles call the forest home. It's a place of beauty for every season and a source of spiritual refreshment. And it is a process of life, an interconnected whole, that if tended carefully, will perpetuate itself. Forests are truly one of our nation's most important resources for the multiple benefits they yield. One third of our country is forested. Of those 737 million acres, about a third is federally owned, and much of the rest, some 300 million acres, is tended by private individuals. Around 6 million people own and manage these valuable forest lands in a wide variety of ways and for an equally wide variety of reasons. Some of those owners have made a commitment to leave their land in better shape than they found it, to manage for multiple benefits for the long run. They balance environmental and economic principles as they manage. They recognize a responsibility called stewardship. They are the keepers of the forest. When you look at the land of a forest steward, you see more than the trees. You see a reflection of the manager's values and deeply held beliefs. How they manage their land is as individual as they are. Each of the managers you're about to see is a successful land steward, and each has his own story to tell. Bob Jackson and I went together and bought this in the fall of 1970. It's 160 acres, and we cruised it at a million nine hundred thousand board feet of timber. And uh, in the past 24 years or 25 years next week, we will have logged about 1.7 million feet off of it and still have close to 2 million feet left. And the trees that are left are bigger and better than what was here when we bought it. So if I would have cut this timber in 1970, I still wouldn't at this time, and 23 years probably would not have anything ready to harvest. But by leaving it grow, it more than doubled in volume. And what we've been doing on an average is coming in every year and logging about three to four percent of the worst trees. And uh, by keeping it fully stocked in a wide variety of sizes and species and so on, I think in the long run, it will make us far more money than if we cut it and put the money in the bank. One of the things that I've recently came to the conclusion is we should not cut healthy trees in general, regardless of the size, doesn't make any difference, they're small, big, uh, whatever. If a healthy tree has got room to grow, you should let them grow. And it shouldn't make any difference on species either. If Mother Nature put them here and uh, they're healthy and growing, why they probably belong. It takes about, in this area, it takes 40 or 50 years to get the first 200 board feet. And then each 10 year period after that, it puts on 200 board feet on these, each of these lines represents 200 board feet. So in effect, after this tree got to be around 18 inches, it was putting volume on five times faster than it did in the first 50 years. So the conclusion is that a healthy, well-spaced trees, 16 inches diameter, should be left to grow. In other words, you shouldn't be cutting your larger trees. Timber is uh, becoming more and more valuable, and it is definitely make a person money if you manage it properly. And being good stewards, I think, is, 
is not uh, doing extremes. Don't neglect the land, but don't go in and uh, harvest too heavy and uh, drastically lower the productivity of the site. Some people say, have your cake and eat it too, and I think we can really do this if we're, if we're good stewards. We can, we can eat quite a lot of it and still have a lot for everyone to enjoy. When I uh, came out here and looked at the place, it was a disastrous mess. It looked horrible. And that was the reason I was able, as a 25-year-old, to buy the place, because no one else wanted it, because it was a derelict piece of land. And everyone at first said that this, uh, these trees will never be worth anything. And uh, over time, it became obvious to me that they would be, and that uh, there was some advantage in managing it for that. The idea with Morning Hill Tree Farm is to manage ponderosa pine on a long rotation. So we're trying to return the functioning of that old growth stand in as many ways as we can while uh, encouraging to a long-term growth of a high-value product. One of our long-term objectives is to uh, provide uh, some retirement income here. We uh, believe we will achieve uh, old growth uh, minimum characteristics in about 2014, at which time uh, we would have a better quality log to sell. And coincidentally, uh, in the year 2014, I'll be 62 years old. This is a tree farm, and as such, we are here. One of our goals is to produce a commodity, but uh, it is not to tree farm in the model of corn lined up in rows, but rather, and not also is it just to let nature take its course. The idea is to be nature's helping hands. And I believe by doing this uh, to farm the land this way that in the long run the actual economic return to us will be greater by managing for a complete functioning system. I think stewardship obviously must mean different things to different people but to me it means looking at our impact that is the way we affect the land the forest, the soils, the air, the water, our own lives, how we live, and to try to make each one of these effects individually as a whole positive so that we give back more than we take. When I first started to manage my timber, I, I spent a lot of time just looking at it and getting acquainted with what was there in terms of the timber. There's a lot to study in a woodland, and uh, if you want it to remain a woodland, uh, you've got to handle it very delicately. <coughs> Good steward takes care of the forest for the future. I wanted to leave something besides stumps or 13-year-old uh, trees or whatever it would have been for the next generation to work with. And I think that's the thing that separates clear cutting from uh, selective management or all age management, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of thought to clear cut. Uh, anybody can go out and lay out a 40 acre clear cut. All you need is a paint can and just run some reasonably straight lines and you got a 40 acre clear cut. If you selectively cut, you can cut every year as uh, Leo does, or you can cut every five years. But what you do is to cut just what the forest is producing, all the while maintaining the original stand. So if your forest uh, produces so many thousand board feet per year, you can take down that much per year. If your forest produces so many thousand board feet per five years, you can take that down every five years. Uh, fit it into your plan, see how it works out best for you. 
but never cut down below what you started with, because what you leave is much more important than what comes down. The longer you can keep it on the stump, as long as it's healthy and as long as it's growing well, the more money you're making per year. I guess I've been always one to try and protect the resource. And aesthetic value is very important to all of us in this family. So in 1977 and 78, when we started harvesting, why we went in and took out only the diseased and dying trees. We annually harvest about 140,000 board feet of saw logs. But we don't only manage timber, we manage water, we manage wildlife as much as we can. We manage for all the resources that are out there. Take these trees here. Behind it's a good idea to have a written plan, one that you can focus on and review from time to time so that you stay focused on what you're, how you want to accomplish your management objectives. The most important part of that plan was determining what our goals and objectives was for that timber land. And so we just didn't do anything until we had that firmly in mind. Small woodland owners need to visit everybody that they can possibly contact and with the money resources that they have. That might include visiting and employing a professional forester. It might include visiting and uh, having other people look at their property. That would include the forestry agent, the extension service, the foresters at their state department of forestry, the master woodland manager, or even just a neighbor that is doing good work next door. But, uh, uh, they need to read all the literature they can find. There's a lot written, but you've got to ask for it. Uh, so there's a lot of different people that they need to contact, and literature that they need to read, and uh, that type of thing, I think, in order to implement their plans. Throughout the United States, millions of people own forest land. They manage it in many ways, according to their individual values and objectives. But not every land owner is a land steward. Forest land stewards take the long view. They know that an equal balance of environmental and economic principles will provide the best long-term return. They know that healthy, productive forests are best for watersheds, wildlife, soils, and recreational values. Forest land stewards use management plans and objectives to guide their actions. And if they have a management question, they know where to look for the answers. In short, forest land stewards use the land, protect the land, and pass the land with all its diversity and all its benefits to future generations. I guess stewardship is, is taking care of the resources that we have the, with the knowledge that we have today the best we can for generations to come. I feel good about our management, real good about the objectives that we're accomplishing, uh, whether it be uh, providing for the income or wildlife management or recreation value or whatever it might be. If we protect the land, then that land will take care of us. 